Good Saturday evening, everybody. Live and direct just past the bottom of the hour. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick weather update for you to see a little bit more about what's going on in and around the Mid-South and points beyond. So if you have any plans for being outdoors tonight for late this evening, definitely want to prepare ahead for the possibility of some pretty chilly weather, but you will not have to have the umbrella early on. So definitely some good news on that for right now. So if you are going to be, again, heading out the door pretty soon, prepare ahead for some chilly conditions. Getting into the course of the rest of the evening and into tomorrow, clouds will be on approach and we'll also see again the possibility of some areas of rainfall making their way into the Mid-South as we get into around, say, tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening as well. Not going to be cold enough for anything frozen, nor does it appear to be strong enough for anything involving severe weather, so definitely good news on that. We'll keep you updated on that coming up here in just a little while. For those of you who are tuning in on Paris, Periscope and Twitter. First of all, thanks for dropping by and place your uh, location wherever you're coming from into the comments section. We'd love to know a little bit more about where exactly you're from. And if you have a temperature gauge outside, let's see what's going on there. Hersey174, welcome to the show on Periscope. Also, Caster Cal, if I'm reading that correctly, with two point typeface and my bifocals. And welcome to everybody who's tuning in on Facebook for tonight as well. Glad to have you along for the ride. And if you have any questions or concerns or anything, drop them into the comments section and we'll do our best to answer the questions about what may be going on with your Mid-South forecast as we go throughout the rest of the evening. We'll have an update coming up in just about 90 minutes on News Channel 3 at 10. If you can't stick around for that, here's a view of what's going on over the next few hours. Again, temperatures on the slow slide downwards for the most part. Again, not seeing a lot of very warm conditions out there. So if you're heading out for, say, a late movie and a show, uh, maybe some late dinner or going out for a nosh on place. Please keep in mind that it's going to be pretty cold and pretty breezy as well. The good news is winds will be turning back around to the southeast, and so that's going to help to keep the temperatures up into tomorrow, and that's going to be important with our forecast. We'll tell you why on that coming up here in just a little bit. Rest of the evening into tomorrow. Again, so far, hopefully remaining quiet where it comes to earthquakes. Yes, if you want to get really nitpicky, this has nothing to do with weather, but again, we are very close to that New Madrid fault line, so we kind of like to keep an active eye on what's going on and so far there's nothing going on in and around the area where it comes to earthquakes at least in the last 24 hours. More information via the United States Geological Survey or from the Center for Earthquake Research and Information and if you felt anything in the way of earthquakes up and around say southeast Missouri, northwest Tennessee, northeast Arkansas, you can tell the USGS and SERI about it by going to their earthquake pages, clicking on the earthquake, and then clicking on the Did You Feel It link, and then you can participate in citizen science. You can tell the National uh, Centers for Earthquake Information about what you felt and when. It may not seem like much, but it is a good opportunity for you to know that your data, your participation might help to maybe someday participate in uh, predicting earthquakes. It's possible, but you don't have to have a PhD to participate in a scientific study. All you need is just a willingness to, again, drop your information in and a great opportunity to do that right there. Currently in the Mid-South, clear conditions, view from the flyover and around Sycamore View and I-40, traffic live view on our transmitter tower cam from I-40 and Witten Road moving along pretty nicely at this time, and again, not seeing anything in the way of major slowdowns or accidents out there. Likewise, from South Haven, from I-55 and Goodman Road, looks like uh, one of the Highway Patrol members heading off to something important there for just a little bit, and some pretty heavy traffic, but a little lighter than what it was about an hour ago, so starting to see the normal drop-off in traffic out there for this evening, so good news there. Ole Miss Campus, fairly clear skies and 28 degrees reported, winds out of the southeast at 6 and seeing 22 degrees for a wind chill in Oxford, Mississippi for this evening. And if you are traveling by air, Memphis International not showing any slowdowns at this time. And good news on that if you are traveling. A few clouds out there, but not much beyond that. And good news for travelers throughout the continental United States late this evening. No delays showing up at this time. More of this information on your computer. All you have to do is go here, fly.faa.gov, and keep you updated on what's going on throughout the continental United States. Not seeing any rainfall just yet on Storm Tracker 3S. More potential for rainfall early tomorrow morning well back to our west. We'll be monitoring that on News Channel 3. If you're heading north, there is going to be the possibility of some winter weather coming on through. Winter weather advisories issued from just south of Chicago, St. Louis, Jeff City, Columbia, Kansas City, 
all the way down to the Arkansas state line. Winter weather advisories are issued to cover a number of different weather scenarios. Could be sleet, could be freezing rain, could be snow, could be a mixture of all that in there. So again, something for you to take a look at if you or anybody else you know is traveling up and down or up in just general direction at this point in time. Uh, Bozo Wolfolk on Facebook. Uh, hope Senatobia doesn't get any rain tomorrow. Having my grandson's birthday party. Well, you're going to have to get that taken care of early during the day. Pardon me for the wobble of the camera for just a little bit as I try to get to the comments section to see who's checking in. David Howell, let it snow. Thank you very much for that one. Uh, see, D. Leach, I do get all the quakes in the world on the USGS website. Very good. Thank you very much for checking in on that. D. Leach, 8 in Old Bridge, New Jersey. Decently chilly in that area. Diane Wingo, snow in our future. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. And Stacy D. Dowdy, Selmer, Tennessee. Welcome to the show. And thanks a lot to everybody for checking on in. Uh, let's see, Lise, Lise Barber, welcome to the show on Periscope and Twitter. Thanks for joining us for this evening and keeping you updated as to what's going on. The storm system itself, again, mainly back out to the west of us. The energy is heading this direction. We're going to have to get, again, a lot of this making its way back over this direction before we start seeing any problems. But those clouds, as you can see, are starting to make their way into the area of western Arkansas and Missouri, and even some snow showers starting to set up south of Minneapolis and all the way down into around portions of northwestern Iowa for tonight. So we're starting to see the effects of that storm system getting a little bit closer into the area. WeatherNet 3 sites across the Mid-South back in the mid to upper 20s to lower 30s. Right after sunset, the temperatures started to tumble, and that's where they're winding up right now at just about 840 on Saturday evening. If you'd like to get this information on your computer, all you have to do is go right here, wreg.com slash weather, and you can find out more about what's going on at the WeatherNet site closest to you. Now, let's go ahead and run the numbers and show you into tomorrow morning. Right before daybreak airs, cloud cover gets a little thicker back to the west. Hopefully, we'll see a little bit of a sunrise taking place, but if the clouds overspread the area, that could be a bit of a problem. Chances for rainfall really start to make their way into the area past about lunchtime across the Mississippi River by about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and then everybody by News Channel, 5, News Channel 3 at 5 tomorrow gets, again, a good chance of rainfall. But with these southeasterly breezes, temperatures will be well above freezing, so we don't have a lot going on when it comes to anything in the way of frozen precipitation. But if you are heading back to the east around Nashville, eastern side of the plateau in middle Tennessee, could be some rain mixed with snow around Nashville, and maybe down to just, say, west of Chattanooga or so. And if you're approaching Knoxville, could be a lot more potential for snowfall there. A lot of these temperatures will be fairly chilly. It's going to be a cold rain tomorrow because several thousand feet up, all that snow and ice is going to drop on down. Once it gets closer to the surface, all that snow and ice melts and becomes rainfall. So we're not going to be expecting too much, but there could be the occasional sleep pellet that's going to be a little bit more hardy that makes its way all the way on down to the ground. So that could be something to take a look at. Phys Ed Brian, welcome to the show on Periscope and Twitter. Thanks for stopping on by for tonight. Temperatures remain a little bit milder into tomorrow evening. Yeah, I know, granted, mid to upper 30s don't really sound like very mild conditions. <clears throat> Excuse me into tomorrow, but these will determine what we get in the way of rain mixed with snow or just plain rainfall. And mostly it's going to be just plain rain, but unfortunately look what happens as you approach commute time on Monday and also right on into commute time home again. There'll be chances of rainfall around, but then that'll mark the end of the rainfall making its way on through. We're not looking at a deluge worth of rainfall at this point in time, but we will see a good soaker for most of the rest of the Mid-South as we get into around Monday evening. So maybe an inch, inch and a half, somewhere in there. But so far, no indication from the National Weather Service that we're looking at a flash flood potential. So good news on that. Now, tomorrow we should make the mid to upper 40s with those southeasterly breezes. That'll help keep the temperatures up by just a bit. Rain chances begin in around afternoon, continue through most of the day on Monday, and then lift out of the area by Monday evening. Then as we get into Tuesday, temperatures near normal. That's a nice change. But if that's too cold for you, 
take a look at Wednesday and Thursdays, we see some numbers much improved back into the lower 60s for highs. That's This right here is about normal for this time of the year. This is going to be going above normal, so that's a nice little treat for most of the area right there. JP Rockin, thank you very much for the high five, and thanks for joining us on Periscope and Twitter for tonight. Rest of the forecast, again, we see that big downturn in the temperatures by the end of the week, so remember, it is still January, so this is nice, but this is definitely the exception to the rule back into the 30s by the week's end or so. Now, really good news. At this time of the year, we can wind up with, again, bad winter weather. We can get bone-chilling cold very easily. We can also get a pretty good amount of severe weather, and none of that is happening as we go toward the holiday next Monday. So if you're involved in making it a day on for service instead of just another day off, Great news. It looks like it's going to be near normal for temperatures on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and it's also going to be mostly sunny. So maybe a jacket. Doesn't look like it's going to be too bad out there. A little chilly in the morning, no question about that, but through the rest of the day, some great conditions out there as we head into the day of service coming up. So really great to see that taking place. So that'll help out the volunteer groups going throughout the neighborhoods of the Mid-South and beyond to make the area a little bit neater, a little bit better place out there. So please consider getting out and doing what you can to help make it a nicer place out there on the day of service and everywhere beyond as well. Again, for Martin Luther King Jr. Day and every day to follow. Now, whether where the troops are, if you have friends or loved ones stationed overseas, they couldn't make it home for the holidays, here's a quick peek at what it looks like out there. Winds a little breezy and a little bit of rainfall at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. Got 71 degrees reported there right now. Back into Iraq, temperatures back into the 30s up around Mosul, 40s in Baghdad, 50s Basra and Naz Najaf with a few clouds, but otherwise mostly clear back toward the Euphrates River Valley. Chile into around portions of Afghanistan, teens in Faizabad. Kabul also at 18, 29 in Kandahar with sunshine as the sun comes up very early Sunday morning and mid to upper 30s, still not light at around Herat, but mid to upper 30s there. Heading toward the Persian Gulf area, 50 degrees in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, 50 degrees at the International Airport in Kuwait, Doha at 64 in Qatar, and 66 degrees being reported with clear skies in and around Bahrain. Toward the Korean Peninsula, a little bit cooler conditions as well, lower 30s around Seoul, back toward Kunsan with some snowfall reported on the southwest side of the Korean Peninsula. Back toward the DMZ, we've got 35 degrees near Chunchan and 30s and 40s back into the southeastern part of the Korean Peninsula right now with partly to mostly cloudy skies uh, late Sunday morning. If you'd like to take a look at this information, very easy to access and it is not classified data. All you have to do is go to the World Meteorological Organization and that's available at public.wmo.int. A great way to get more information about what's going on around the world where it comes to weather, including weather where your loved ones may be stationed. So if you'd like to know more about that and keep up to date with a kind of a nice little weather link to see what's going on, where they are, this is a good opportunity to do so with the weather stations that are scattered all over our globe. So something to think about there if you'd like to do that. If you've got weather pictures, please send them along. Jacqueline Stafford from Real Foot Lake showing a almost frozen over surface of Real Foot from earlier today or yesterday. And thanks to Miss Jacqueline for sending that along on Twitter. And if you've got pictures like this, well, several pictures, actually sent about four of them along with some amazing pictures of the ice on the lake and around some of the bases of the trees. If you've got them, we'd love to see them. All you have to do is send them to me at aonic underscore WRG3 on Twitter. Don't forget that severe weather season, the main severe weather season for this area of the country, is coming up in the course of the next several weeks. So it's time now to start getting ready for that. If you're new to the area, if you've never taken a Skywarn class before, now is the time to consider doing it. National Weather Service will be, again, offering their courses. They'll be starting in a few weeks, and when they issue the course schedule, we will let you know about that. So stay tuned for more with News Channel 3, and we'll keep you advised as to what we're going to be looking for coming up here throughout the rest of the next several weeks. Now is the time, before any severe weather gets anywhere close to the Mid-South, to get ready and to know what's going to be happening and how to react to anything involving severe weather weather. That's going to be your best defense against any of the storms that may form in this area as we get into this next season. So please remember that and
and keep that in mind. Tune into my forecast on the radio, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3 on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations. And, of course, I'll be live with Bob and Josh coming up bright and early Monday through Friday morning on AM 730, Yahoo Sports Radio. If you can't tune in in the Mid-South area because you're out of the viewing signal or out of the listening signal, talkbacklivenetwork.org, and you can tune in that direction as well. Kristen Holloway has an update on the day's news coming up on News Channel 3 at 10. Mike Sadie has a busy day in sports and of course yours truly with your complete forecast that will be coming up here at about News Channel 3 at 10 in just about an hour and 10 minutes so stick around for more on that. Live and direct from downtown Memphis I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for our exclusive video weather blog Weather Overtime for Saturday night and stay tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the course of the rest of the weekend for updates on air and online.